Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is about art advice I wished I'd never taken. Now this is kind of funny because um, I'm sharing with you four pieces of advice that I wished I'd never received from artists but yet I'm giving you advice on not taking advice. So <laughs> it hopefully my my goal is that when you finish with this video, you will just absorb the information that I've given you and it will help you make a better decision about what to do and what not to do when it comes to your own business. So that is my goal and hopefully it will come across that way. Um, so I will start out by saying that uh, the reason I wanted to do this video is because when I started in 2012 with my own art business, I knew nothing about business. I thought that I could just sit down and paint and that I would sell my work and that everything would just fall into place. And that is just not how these things work. If you are thinking long-term, if you are looking for a long-term full-time art business, Painting is a very small process. You have to market your work, you have to have a business plan, you have to know how to run a business successfully in order for it to be successful. Um, so there were just four things that I was told by various people who had been in the art world for a lot longer than I had. Um, and I thought that if I took all of these pieces of advice and I did everything, that eventually something would work and that my business would just take off. Um, so these are the four things that uh, actually did not work for me and my business. If, they, if you've tried them and if they are working for you or if you want to try them, you think they will work for you, please do them. Um, this is just more for, uh, more for food for thought. Let's put it that way, because I don't want to discourage you from trying these things. I just want you to just be able to think about them before you jump into making any uh, decisions. I have a cheat sheet over here because I don't want to miss anything. So let's get started. Plus, it helps keep me from talking and talking and talking for like a half hour. Um, okay, so the first piece of art advice I wish that I had never taken. Sign up for anything and everything and put your art everywhere online. Um, I was given that piece of advice and I thought it was good advice because the consensus was that if you are everywhere and then someone Googles your name, then you will come up higher in the search engine and it will be easier to find you. Okay, well that sounded easy enough. So what did I do? I signed up for Fine Art America. I signed up for Etsy. I signed up for Store Envy. I signed up for Zazzle. I was on Redbubble. I was trying to do all of these different sites all at once. And for anyone who has tried to open up one shop, it is extremely time consuming to open up and run one shop. Imagine trying to do four or five shops. It's, it nearly drove me crazy. Um, it was so stressful because it's so time consuming. And then you have to maintain these shops. You have to keep adding new content. You, you don't want them to look like that they've been created and then six months down the line, they've never been updated. You know. And that's precisely what ended up happening to me. I opened up all of these shops, put all of my work across all of these platforms, and I couldn't keep up with it. I just couldn't. I spread myself so thin that by the time anyone knew me and ended up Googling my name, they would come to these shops that had not been maintained or updated in weeks or months. And that reflected negatively on my business. So. I wished for myself that I had just chosen one, two, three at the very most, at the very most. I actually felt more comfortable just doing two, um, just so you could have one to sort of toggle back and forth between. 
two businesses online where you can show your work, sell your work, and then you can spend the rest of that time learning and creating. So that was the first piece of advice. I wish that I take, it would have saved me a tremendous amount of headache. So that was number one. Number two, um, sort of falls in line with number one. Number two was to be on every social platform online that you can think of. Um, this is Snapchat, uh, Boomerang, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, uh, Periscope, Patreon, Facebook, and the list is constantly growing. Um, the only problem with this is that not everyone's work is going to translate well on every platform. Um, if you have a product that is all visual, then Instagram would be a great place for you to be on because Instagram is a very visually appealing place. Beautiful, stunning photographs. That is what Instagram is all about. If you don't know how to take photographs, if you don't have a good camera, if you, if you don't know the basics of being able to translate your work well into photographs for potential clients, Instagram will be a waste of time for you. So it would be better to learn how to do that and then come back to that particular platform. Pinterest is another one. Pinterest is where people gravitate because they want ideas. It's the first place I go to when I want a Halloween costume, Pinterest. I go to Pinterest to look for ideas. Now, Pinterest can result into sales, but you have to figure out how to translate your work so that it would be well received on Pinterest. So, um, my first thought would have been, should I do Pinterest? How can I create my work so that people will look at it and become inspired? And how can that then turn into sales? So it, it would have been better for me to have taken a step back, look at all of these different platforms like Patreon, which I was on for a while and, and Pinterest and Facebook and you know all those other things. Make sure that they are the places where uh, where my work would be at home and where I can connect with my followers. Um, because I write uh, for my paintings as well as paint, um, my spirit animal series in particular is what I'm talking about here. So I create animal symbolism to go along with the paintings. That, that generates communication. My customers have questions about spirit animals. They want to know more about my writing. So Instagram, even though I have visually appealing work, it, it feeds that area of, of Instagram, but I'm more comfortable on Facebook because I can establish a dialogue with my followers. So Facebook is the perfect platform for me. So again, it would just be better to decide where your work would be most well received and then just choose a few that you can take on realistically, comfortably, and not work yourself half to death trying to do. So that would have saved me a lot of headache had I done that. That way I could be engaged and I would, I would have content that was current and up to date instead of opening up all of these accounts and then half of them ends up sitting there without being tended to. Again, that reflects, reflects poorly on my business. So that was the second uh, piece of advice that I have. Um, the third thing, the third piece of advice that I wished I had never taken, uh, spend lots of time trying to get into an art gallery. For artists, especially when I was growing up, art galleries are the end-all, beat-all. If you are not in an art gallery, then you have not made it as an artist. That is just simply not true. Uh, maybe at one point it was, but before the internet especially, but now with the internet, there is absolutely no reason why you cannot sell your work yourself online or in person on your own without the use of an art gallery. Um, 
I felt initially that a gallery must be the place where I needed to be because all of the artists that I admired at the time were all in art galleries and I felt, oh, they're really established because they're in an art gallery. You know, there are a lot of behind the scenes things with art galleries. Maybe not all of them are like this, but the ones that I've dealt with personally they take your artwork, they only give you 50% of it. A lot of them pretty much hold your artwork hostage where you can't, you can't sell it anywhere else. You have to sell exclusively through them, obviously, because they have your work, so you can't sell it. They're doing it for you. But a lot of places, they won't even tell you who it is that purchased your artwork um, because, obviously, they don't want you to then undercut them and sell yourself. Um, to the customers they need to make a business too which I understand but um, as far as an artist's perspective goes then you don't know who it is that bought your work you can't say thank you for purchasing my work you can't learn about your customers at all that way um, for me online was the best way for me to sell my work I was able to retain all of the control over my work and sell it how I saw fit and keep 100% of the profits. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, take my advice because that's not supposed to be what this video is about. So I'm gonna reel it in and not say that. Um, so for me, I wish that I, I had not taken that advice and had looked into it a bit more and realized that, that I did not have to uh, have the label of success associated with being part of an art gallery. So I hope that made sense. Okay, and number four, finally, the fourth piece of advice that I wished I had uh, not taken. Do as many art fairs as possible. I could spend all day on this topic. Um, I I will tell you that my experience with art fairs has been both positive and negative. I was told by several people that art fairs, are the, it's the only way to go. You could make a lot of money um, in, in one day or one weekend. Plus you get the added benefit of getting to know your customers, you're face to face with people, you get to learn what it is that they want. But not everybody is going to be able to sell work in person. Um, I'm one of those people, so I know what I'm talking about in that regard. I sell my original paintings online. They do not sell in person, very rarely. I think I've sold over the years two, two paintings maybe. That's it. Prints sell in person for me. Originals sell online. I never would have guessed that. Uh, for me as a buyer, I would like to see the things that I'm going to be purchasing, especially if I'm going to be paying a lot of money for something. But my work does not, it doesn't sell that way. It sells better online than it does in person. So you never know. You just never know with that type of thing. Um, I will tell you that when I was doing the art fair circuit, I nearly gave up my career as a full-time artist. I, by the end of one summer, I was so discouraged, I was so depressed, I was going to just give the whole thing up because I felt like a complete failure. And it was because I did not do very well at the art fairs. Um, you can make a lot of money, sure, if you are selling the right things at the right price, um, and a lot of that just takes trial and error. If that's what you know you want to do, then do a lot of research on art fairs. Just don't put all of your eggs in one basket, I guess is what I'm saying, and think, oh, well, the art fair circuit, that's where I'm going to end up making my money. And then it just, it doesn't magically happen. There's a lot of things that have to work together. You have to have price points that are what people are willing to spend and a lot of it just takes trial and error plus it is a lot of work I have such a high respect for people who do art fairs especially during like all summer like what they do every summer I I could I'm just not one of those people who can do it it is it's exhausting for me to do those things um 
but it can be done. And if you want me to do a separate video on art fairs, um, I, and just to share my experience, if you're thinking about doing art fairs, let me know in the comments section. I would be happy to do a, uh, a different video on that because I don't want to talk for the next hour on <laughs> just art fairs. Um, but it just for me in general, I, I, if I had paid attention to the way I was feeling, um, being as despondent as I was, I never, I, I never would have been successful as a full-time artist because I would have just given up thinking that the art fair was really the only path um, to lead to a lucrative career. It simply is not. I'm living proof of that. So you don't have to do art fairs to be a successful uh, full-time artist. So um, anyway, those are my four tips and I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, I hope a lot of it made sense. I hope I didn't, uh, I, that I didn't act like I was trying to tell you what to do. I'm more just wanting to give you the experiences of what I wish I personally had not done for my business. So if any of these things work for you, have worked for you, um, I would love to hear your success stories about uh, the things that I managed to fail at. Um, because I think that it's important for those of you who are watching to see uh, different perspectives of these particular topics. So this is generally just to promote discussion. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you get a chance, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that I am on the right track for uh, creating video content that you want to see. Consider subscribing and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.